Hi, I'm Tiffany. I'm a product manager here at Nextmove, and today I'm going to talk through some of the local testing tooling that we've developed for our own internal use um, and for use with customers. Um, so we do a lot of testing locally during model development, um, everything from the equivalent of unit testing for models to test uh, the impact of changes during development, um, all the way through to experimentation and scenario testing. So today I'll focus on the latter use case um, and look specifically at scenario testing for a routing problem where you want to determine how many vehicles uh, you should have in your fleet. So I'll go through an example of how we would approach this question um, with some of our local testing tooling. So as a starting point for local development, uh, we'll use our workflow development tool, Nextmove CLI. Um, so if you haven't downloaded it and played with this yet, I'd encourage you to do so. Um, but this will just give you a quick preview of um, how you can get started with a new model. So through this CLI, we can initialize a new model from a template um, and we'll do that for a routing model. We have a bunch of templates for different use cases, uh, but we'll focus on this one today. So what it's doing is pulling down everything you need uh, to have a working initial model for routing. So if we go into the folder of files just created, I'll show you quickly what's in there. So we have a sample input file, a main model package, um, and some other Go related files. So I'll go into what's inside those in more detail with the example, but just so you know kind of what you get when you initialize a new model. Um, and as I said, these are ready to go working um, templates, so we can run them immediately and get a result for our routing problem. And so we use next move run local for that. It points to the model package and to an input file. And then we'll just pipe the results to the command line so we can quickly inspect them. Cool, so that ran. Um, don't worry too much about the details in the JSON uh, result here, but just so you kind of get an idea for it. Um, so it has each vehicle with an ID and then the route, so the ordered stops for that vehicle. Those stops were in um, the original input file and now they've been assigned to the different vehicles. So uh, we have a working routing model and this is kind of where you would get started and from there you would want to customize it and then uh, start the testing process. So testing is essentially running this many times for different input files um, or different model variations and ideally automating this process. So that's what we've done uh, for our own internal use. So I'm going to switch over to the demo that I've created for this talk. And we'll open up the model files. All right, so right now this is all empty, but I can show you the, um, the main model package here just to get a flavor for it. Um, we have stops and vehicles, which is common in a routing problem. And then um, here we've added an unassigned penalty. Uh, this uh, discourages the solver from leaving stops unassigned. An initialization cost. Um, this is a cost for adding another vehicle to your fleet. Um, and then capacity for each of the vehicles. So they have a limit in what they can take. Um, and then just quickly, the input file. So here it's a little different from the standard template one. We've changed vehicles to just be an integer. Um, and this is the thing that we're going to vary as we automate the creation of several input files. Um, and then we have stops, and these are just location IDs with positions. There's a hundred of them in here. Um, then we have an unassigned penalty, some options for our solver. So this uh, is setting the solver duration limit to one second, uh, that capacity I mentioned, and then the vehicle initialization cost. Um, if we want to quickly look at uh, what this um, is on a map, just to see the, that the stops um, in our input file make sense, we can use a tool called Nextplot. Uh, let me pull up the command for using this tool right now. So Nextplot is an internal tool we have for visualization as part of our testing. Uh, it points to an input file. Here we'll use that base JSON, and then it tells you within the input file where to find the uh, different locations, so the long and latitudes here. So I'm just going to paste that in. Um, and not spend too much time on all the different options. It's very customizable, um, which is great. Cool. So now it has run, um, and then it produces a bunch of different map files. This really nice interactive HTML. Um, I will just show the static one uh, for now, just for the sake of not switching windows. Um, and so we can see here, these uh, the points are all the stops in our base input file. So clustered around Philadelphia with some different neighborhoods and spread out. So this should be good for testing. Cool. So now we have our base input. We want to then automate the generation of several input files based on that uh, initial one. 
So we're going to do that with a Python script. Um, and so I'm going to kick that off. Um, so it can start running and then I'll walk you through what it's doing. So we're just looping over a different number of vehicles from 10 to 15 to test, test different fleet sizes. And then it's taking that base input, um, creating a bunch of new inputs, modifying the vehicle number, and then running it through our solver um, to get an output. And it's using that same next move run local command, uh, pointing to the model package, and then dynamically pointing to the different input and output paths. Cool, so that model ran. Um, and on the right, we have a summary of the different solutions. So, and you can see as well, sorry, in the file structure on the left here, um, these are all the different inputs that were generated and the outputs um, that were a result of running it through uh, the next move solver. So we can see uh, the value of these solutions. Here, we're using the default objective function, which is to minimize the total duration um, of routes. And then we can see the number of unassigned stops the number of vehicles utilized, and then the path for that specific output file. And then at the bottom, we see the best solution. And so the best solution has 13 vehicles and no unassigned stops. So great, you might wanna just stop there, um, but maybe as a next step, you wanna ask why was the solution with 13 vehicles better than the solution with 10? From here, we know the value is different, the unassigned stops uh, was different, but we don't get much deeper level information about the solutions, um, and so for this, we're going to do a comparison of the two output files, the one for 13 and 10. Um, and we have another script for this kind of comparison, uh, and it's aptly named compare. Uh, this is something that we're also looking into pulling into the command line tooling, so it becomes uh, a simple command rather than our internal scripts. So for now, uh, I'll just run that script, and then I'll give you a flavor for what it's calling. So there'll be um, configurable input, so here I'm telling it to run these two JSON files um, and giving it some other parameters for the script. Um, and then we get the output. So here on the right, we see a summary for the two different files and every vehicle in those files. So for the one with 10 vehicles, we have for each vehicle, the duration of the route and the number of stops. So it's just nice, a compressed summary view of those uh, different JSON output files. And then for the 13 vehicles, we see the duration and stops. So we can see that for the most part, or completely, all of the uh, 10 vehicle solution have maxed out their capacity. So they're all hitting the eight stops uh, versus the 13 vehicle solution. There's a little bit of variety, but it's still getting close to that max capacity. So that's what's primarily driving um, the allocation here. So then you may want to say, uh, let's look at this data in a different way. So part of the script is to generate a bunch of standard output files and summary plots. Um, so we'll just take a, a look at a sampling of those here. Um, so one of the kind of common plots is to look at histogram of those results. So it's the same thing that we had in the table for um, the output with 10 vehicles versus 13. And we can see that the if we look at these lines here, the purple line is for the 10 vehicles. The mean and median uh, durations for each vehicle's route is a bit higher than for the 13 vehicle solution. Makes sense. Fewer vehicles, they have to take longer routes. Uh, we can look at that for other things like stops. Um, and then we also have a table with the summaries um, formatted this way. So the 10 vehicle solution is in this column, the 13 vehicle solution is this column. And we can see, again, the duration was a little bit shorter when you add more vehicles, but the number of stops tends to be about the same per vehicle. So we're still hitting up against that constraint. Um, finally, what you might want to do um, is plot the two solutions on a map. So just as we used Nextplot before, um, we can use it with these output files. So let me grab the commands here. Um, so we're going to do it for, this is for the, the uh, 13 vehicle solution, and this is for the 10 vehicle solution. So I'm just going to grab those and run them, and that will, again, generate PNG and interactive HTML map files for the two different solutions. So let's take a look at those. We get some summary stats about each of the solutions. Um, and then here we have the 10 vehicle output, PNG and HTML, and the 13 vehicle output. So let's start with the 10. I'll close this out just so we can have a zoomed in view. So here we see um, the routes plotted. Uh, the gray dots are unassigned stops. So there's quite a few of those as we saw from the initial table. And the routes tend to be pretty overlapping, um, maybe not ideal, depending on um, kind of what characteristics we care about. 
And then if we see the 13 vehicle solution, there are no unassigned stops, um, as we saw before, and the routes are starting to look a little more like we might like, less overlap, um, kind of concentrated in different areas. So overall, I think all the signs are pointing to the 13 vehicle solution as best. So I will stop here for this demo. Um, testing is something we care a ton about at Next Move, and we're investing heavily in bringing to the platform. So any feedback or thoughts in that area are always welcome. Thanks.